All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Today, I've got Itamar from Cool Cousin um, here for an interview. Uh, cool Cousin is a website where you can discover incredible places with city guys by trusted locals. Now, Itamar, could you give us a little bit more in depth about what exactly Cool Cousin is and what that means? Of course. And it's great to be uh, here speaking with you, Brian. Um, so we started Cool Cousin about two and a half years ago. And all of us were avid travelers and we love traveling and we love to discover, you know, new places, new cities, new cultures. And one of the difficulties that we had as travelers was that when we're traveling to a new city, let's say we're going to Paris or Rome or New York, or we're going to, to Austin, Texas, or we're going to Seoul and Korea in each city, we would find it hard to find trustworthy recommendations and great experiences that are off the beaten track and also that are you know, not falling into the classic tourist traps. And we've noticed that in the past 10, 15 years, most of the solutions out there have been focusing on crowdsourcing recommendations. We see it with sites like TripAdvisor, where you have no idea who's the recommender and you don't know whether it's someone that you can trust or whether it's someone that shares your own taste. So what we've immediately felt is that we're looking to find a friend wherever we go that we can rely on their advice and recommendations. So that's how Cool Cousin was born. It's a place where you can find a local wherever you're traveling to. Right now we're over 80 cities across the world and we're launching a new city every three, four days. So in each city, we curate a community of locals. They could be designers or chefs or architects. They could be lawyers or students, people of every age, every background. And all of them share one thing, the love of their city. Each of them creates their map filled with recommendations from everything you can imagine, from a cafe or bar to actually shops and places that don't appear in any first Google page, places that are, are more unique or more locally reserved. So basically, if you're traveling, let's say to Barcelona, you pick a cousin on the basics on the basis of whether you find them interesting or uh, uh, like-minded, and you get their map of recommendations. But it's not only about static recommendations and a map and navigation, it's also about asking them questions. So basically, our cousins are the new type of travel agent. They help you to book restaurants, flight tickets, events, whatever you need, A to Z, travel agency and concierge, but from a local, not from some travel agent who's from your own city and probably not into your own vibe. So right now, we're servicing more than half a million travelers, and we decided to tokenize over six months ago because we understood that blockchain enabled us to decentralize travel and actually create a platform where locals can monetize on their hard-earned city knowledge on one hand, and travelers can tap into that information and create and sustain a new type of economy. So our own token, it's a utility token, an ERC-20 compatible token called CUS, is going to be the form of exchange between travelers and locals. So I hope it wasn't too long, but I hope yeah. I got it right. No, yeah, that's great. So one thing um, we keep he hearing in this is trusted locals. And you know, you said you've been around for about two and a half years, and now you're starting to implement blockchain things. Whenever we hear the word trusted, we think of blockchain. Totally. Um, so could you go into a little bit more detail about how that trusted aspect works? Like how how do you know you're not you're not gonna your cousin isn't gonna be some creep that tries to murder you? Of course, it's a great question. So one of the things we treasure the most is invoking trust be between our cousins and our travelers. So we verify each one of our cousins, okay, and we make sure that they represent our values and our vision in each city we operate in. So you can apply to become a cousin, but only a few are actually accepted because they have to make sure that they go through each one of our you know, uh, uh, um, different reviews in the application. But now, as we're moving on to, the, on to blockchain, we're creating a separate board of representatives where 20% of our most active and existing cousins are going to be the ones who decide on a consensus-based system who can be a future cousin or not. So the idea is that, you know, I'm sitting here in Tel Aviv, Israel, and we also have an office in London, and it's, it's kind of not that, um, I would say, valid for us to decide whether someone should be a new cousin in Singapore, because we don't know what's going on there, what's cool or what's not, what's interesting. 
And we want our cousins in Singapore to validate our future cousins. So we're going to actually use our token as an incentive engine for our own community to you know, transfer those responsibilities onto them. Okay. So yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. Um, so how would, I mean, how does someone apply to be a cousin? I've noticed, I actually looked at my city on here and we're not on here yet. So how can I go about um, volunteering to be a cousin to give travelers a good time here? So it's, first of all, it's the easiest thing to do. You go to become.coolcousin.com and you fill an application. But what's important to, to clarify is that right now, up until now, we've been receiving tens of thousands of people from all over the world to apply to become a cousin and they wanted to do it voluntarily. But now, each applicant will actually be entitled to cause tokens. The idea is that it's not going to be longer just a voluntary form uh, of a community, but also we're going to create an incentive for locals around the world to participate in our new economy. So it's about monetizing knowledge that only locals have been exposed to, you know, understanding what events are going on this weekend if you're in LA or what's going on right now in Taipei that you can't miss what is the hot new food festival you're gonna you don't want to miss out on or a grand opening of a new gallery in London so the idea is that those incredible locals have an actual incentive not only to share that information but also to kind of hold the hand of the traveler and make him feel at home anywhere they travel to so that's the vision of our platform. And obviously, we're going to do everything extremely transparent with the help of smart contracts and the help of a very transparent community. That's why we are harnessing blockchain you know, at the, at the core of our platform. So in that sense, it's no longer going to be a simply voluntary community, but also an incentivized community. Cool. So what's your timeline like on the blockchain, blockchain side of things? You already have an existing platform. It's been there for a couple of years. Uh, you're doing your ICO now. What can we expect to see in the next 6 to 12 to 24 months? It's a great question. So because one of the things, you know, that we, we see ourselves as very different from 99% of the ICOs out there is that we're a company with a live product. We have been through almost, you can call it mass adoption, almost a million users. We're live in 50 countries, 80 cities. We're, we're now announcing, by the way, a, a great partnership with the city of New Orleans. And actually, many more official municipalities are joining us to actually bring the vision of Cool Cousin to their city. So because we're a live product with over 20 team members, we're going to work extremely fast in order to do the migration. So in 2018, we're going to launch an in-app wallet where every token holder can actually use their tokens in our platform. So this is a truly utility token where people can actually use the token in order to buy services from locals, from our cousins in 2018. So it's going to start with an in-app wallet and it's going to start with allowing cousins to, to accept payments for tips and for messages and from other services. But and actually, in, in, the, in, in the beginning of, in the end of 2018, we're going to launch the Board of Representatives, which is going to totally revolutionize how our community is going to work, because we're going to empower our cousins to actually ex extend, extend and, you know, uh, uh, expand our, our, our community wherever we're live in and also in new cities. So our Board of Representatives, which is formed by our most active cousins, is going to be launched in late 2018. And then in the beginning of 2019, we're going to launch an API, which is going to be an open late, an API. And we're going to launch a community governance uh, uh, tool, which is really going to harness you know, the best of what blockchain has to offer in terms of self-governance and in terms of consensus vote systems. And we're also going to launch a fourth version of the app, which is going to be, you know, it's going to have much more features it's going to have a lot of new uh, uh, different services that we're uh, offering. And we're also going to launch an Android version, which is very much needed. Right now, we're live in the App Store on iPhone and a, a great web app at coolcousin.com. But we're going to be in the Play Store in 2018. So it's going to be really thrilling to see the next 8, 12 months, what's going to happen, how we're evolving. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that sounds really good. So being around for, for two years already and having a million users, that that definitely makes you an, an old man in the blockchain world. Um, <laughs> yeah. So to switch things up a little bit, uh, if I could ask a little bit more of a personal question, 
what kind of, uh, yeah, on a personal level, how did you get into blockchain? What's kind of been your blockchain journey and what got you into it? So in, um, I, I was actually very much interested in the cypherpunk movement, which was kind of like the early days of the internet in the 1990s. And a few years ago, I read this really great book by Julian Assange about the history of cypherpunks. This was like, uh, I don't know, four or five years ago. But that got me into, and, I, and I've been you know, an, an avid internet user for the, since I was, I don't know, since, since the mid 90s. And I was really drawn to, to how the internet was founded and also what type of new revolutions and evolutions the internet is gonna go through. So I've been interested in blockchain and in, 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 in since I first read the Satoshi White Paper um, a few years after it was released. And obviously um, uh, decided to invest myself uh, in, in cryptocurrencies uh, five, six years ago. But actually, my co-founder and one of my best friends, which is our CTO, Gil Esvilant, has been, and he's our head developer, and he runs our team of eight developers. He's been in blockchain for about eight years. So he's been kind of schooling me all throughout those years, telling me and understanding me, and, and, and as the philosophy and the community has shaped. And obviously, you know, Eight years ago, blockchain was in a totally different level than it is right now, even two years ago, even a year ago. So as we saw uh, uh, the, the kind of blockchain space develop and we saw how utility tokens could revolutionize consumer products, we couldn't help but asking ourselves how we can harness this beautiful technology and this insanely great idea of decentralization of our own company, which actually, you know, a lot of companies are afraid of that because they're giving up power. They're saying, I want to literally give out power from myself, from my central organization, and give it out to the public. So it took us a few months to, to kind of jump and, and say, okay, we're ready to give out, we're ready to, to, to give away that power and truly decentralize our platform. And we've been de debating it and, and, and kind of shaping it in the past few months behind the scenes. But about two months ago, three months ago, we launched our ICO to the public and we shared the news with our great community of users and great community of cousins and everyone was super on board. So it was great to hear that, you know, things that we went through as individuals and things I went through personally is something that our community also wants, which is, you know, a, a company that puts its users and community first. And, you know, we've been seeing a lot of different issues with centralized companies, like the big mess that is going on right now with Facebook and the data breach and Cambridge Analytica. That's what happens when you have too much power. That's what happens when one person, one CEO or one board of directors has all that amount of power centralized in one location. And that's something we as a, as a company and myself as a person want to change. We want and a, 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 you know, a, 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 a cyberspace which allows individuals and communities to thrive and not feel threatened and don't feel that they're pushed aside. So hopefully, and you know, we're just a tiny part of that machine. Hopefully, Cool Cousin will have a, a you know a positive impact over the future of the internet and the future of blockchain by decentralizing our, our company and making sure that users' interests and, and, and our cousins, our community's interests, is put before our own. Yeah, that sounds like the dream. I wish uh, more companies would think like that. Yeah, <laughs> um, and obviously it's going to be a tough dream to fulfill, and we know that it's a huge burden and task that is ahead of us, and we're, you know, we're trying to keep everything realistic, and we're trying to make sure that our own commitments to our contributors and our past investors, by the way, I didn't mention, but Cool Cousin is a VC-backed company, so we've been through the tough due diligence of a big New York venture capital firm, and, and in that sense, we're more like a startup than a regular ICO project. So we feel the burden that we have and the responsibility we have, but we're also extremely excited about how blockchain is going to totally uh, revolutionize the internet. All right, great. Well, Edamar, thank you so much for being on. Um, everybody check out coolcousin.com. Um, and I assume you guys are on Twitter and the Facebook and, and all that stuff as well. Totally. So, yeah, totally. check out Cool Cousin there. See if they're in your uh, city and sign up to be a cousin uh, and help travelers have a better time in your city. So thanks so much and have a great afternoon. Thank you. It was a pleasure speaking with you, Brian.